Today, we're here to talk about MGS. No, not Metal Gear Solid, unfortunately. We're talking about the missile guidance system. I'm sure you've all seen the copy pasta. The missile knows where it is because it knows where it isn't. So we're going to do an explanation on what that actually means. First things first, we're going to talk about Fox-1. So Fox-1 is code for a missile that has semi-active radar homing. As basically, it listens to what's going on and it follows radar beams. Now, this does mean that you have to basically, you have to continuously paint it, the word is. So even after missile launches, you then have to basically babysit it until it actually hits its target. Now, we're going to take a break from continuity for a second and go right to FOX-3. Mm -hmm. And so FOX-3 is active radar homing. In this case, the missile both shouts and listens. This means mm -hmm. as well that unlike FOX-1, you can fire your missile and you can forget about it. So in their infinite wisdom, they called it fire and forget. Now we can go back in time to FOX-2. This is infrared homing, or you're, as most commonly known as heat-seeking missiles. You can't really tell any colors or anything, but basically in all, all an infrared missile knows is those engines are hot and I want some. So I do have a question for you, Tim. Was there a problem when infrared technology was first in development where like living heat signatures would be honed in on? Theoretically, it would be. But most living things don't get hot enough to register compared to an engine. Mm, so in, in, like, an engine. That actually was an issue at one point during, I believe it was the Vietnam War. You couldn't, they, like, they didn't want pilots going below a certain altitude because just the radiant heat from the jungle would confuse their heat seeking missiles. And so MiGs, which were inferior to the jets that we were using, were able to dogfight against quote unquote superior American craft because the missiles would sometimes just crash into the jungle because of the heat. It, it turns out that other than planes, some things also emit a lot of heat. The sun, for instance. There was nah. somewhat of a problem with missiles doing this. Brother, I can forbid the heat signature. Don't do it, brother. Oh, no. no, brother, please. Modern missiles have been programmed to ignore the sun. Like they can just ignore the, they can block out those specific signatures. The thing that tells where the hot part is is called the seeker head, and it moves. They're also in helicopters, and you can have multiple of them. This is one being tested. There's your technician. Basically, if you're the human torch, you better watch out. But here's the thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What's the chance early missiles would actually hit their target? Quick intermission. We have talked about a lot about radar. I'm sure people have, to, have uh, heard the concept of stealth fighters and stealth aircraft and all that. Oh. So this is a quick abridged version of stealth. I can do an entire presentation on stealth separately. In a basic sense, when the radar listens for an echo, if there's no echo, there's nothing to see. So a plane, if it can take your radar beam and move it away so it doesn't go back to the radar dish, that means the plane's still there but the echo is being sent everywhere else. So wait, wait, Tim, Tim. So what you're saying is that to a radar dish, clear blue sky and a spray painted Dorito are the same thing? In essence, yes. So basically, if you can make your aircraft like Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, it's hard to see, but not impossible. So early missiles were exceptionally inaccurate. Some estimates had the accuracy as low as 8%. Did putting missiles on planes increase their effectiveness at all? Yes, because there was you could do something called beyond visual range, which is that that black nose on the front of the aircraft houses a big, powerful radar. And if you do get a lockpick with a radar missile, you can send one of those, and those have ranges of hundreds of miles. And have an 8% chance of hitting them. <laughs> but if that 8% hits, you have now gotten a kill of an enemy aircraft and the pilot having never been in danger yourself. Part of it was they also oversold missiles at the time when they were first invented. So then they started to save weight, they started taking guns off planes. But then when they realized all the missiles missed, now what? So in an effort to bring back fighting skills, the US Navy established a place for half-naked men to play volleyball while glistening in, in the California sun. So Top Gun was what the Navy said, what happens if you run out of missiles when you're fighting? Wait a minute. Top Gun is a real thing? Yeah. Oh, yes. It turns out the solution to having really, really inaccurate missiles was just old reliable. So here we come again, Fox 4. They said Fox 4 to mean guns. And especially in Vietnam, as you were mentioning earlier, actually, there was a very, very high loss rate for U.S. aircraft. The U.S. lost 10,000 aircraft in Vietnam. Jesus. 
I genuinely thought I was like grossly over guessing, but I was like, yeah, better to be high than low. 10,000 aircraft in the 15, 20 years US is in Vietnam. That's an extremely high loss rate. So they had a practical solution. The answer is, is just a gun. Ain't that fantastic. The main fighter of the era, the F-4, the one on top, was outfitted with the gun you see on the bottom. 20 millimeter Gatling gun, about 6,000 rounds per minute. And to be fair, they did get better. They don't still have an 8% hit accuracy. They're a lot better now. Today, they're shifting again because missiles have become so much more accurate. Now the question is again, do you still need a gun? Let's finally talk about that copy pasta. So this is basically just a very, very, very complicated way of saying how a missile chases something. It also sounds pretty good as a rap. The missile knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. By subtracting where it is from where it isn't, or where it isn't from where it is, it obtains a difference or deviation. Very early missiles use something called pursuit guidance, which literally is just what it sounds like. You take something and you chase it from behind as fast as you can. And that's the same reason that the Blackbird, the SR-71, was so fast, it was faster than most missiles. So when they tried this, the missile just couldn't catch them. So if you can't catch it, then you can't do anything. So that's what they come up with something called proportional navigation. So in this one, instead of just chasing the thing, the missile maintains a constant angle to the target. So this means that as the, whatever you're chasing turns or moves, you move as well, and you'll always be leading it slightly. So let's talk about other guidance methods. So those are the basic ones that you normally get on planes, but what about some more fancy ones? First one is something called beam riding. A missile sees a laser beam or a radar beam, and it just follows that. By surfing along the beam, it goes directly to its target. And yes, I did find a way to fit all of the Fantastic Four plus the Silver Surfer into this presentation. You're welcome. <laughs> My God. Well done. The next one is something called home on radiation. So radar can spot planes, and that's bad if you want the element of surprise. So what this does is, when a radar is turned on, this says, I see a radar, I want to, I want to hit it. So this home on radiation makes them quite dangerous for these things, service to air missiles. So the US Air Force has a, had a funny idea during Vietnam. They said, what if we take some of these missiles that home on radar, deliberately rage bait some SAM sites, get them to turn on the radar and throw these things at them. So they hauled in a bunch of pretty good fighter pilots. They called them the wild weasels. And they told them, your job is to fly through a area with missiles and not do anything. The guy behind you will come with those missiles and then shoot them down before they can shoot you down. The motto YGBSM is the response they gave. Uh, you gotta be shitting me, which is what they're said to have said when they first heard what they were gonna do. The last one we have is something called Home on Jam. And again, in their infinite creativity, it does exactly what it says that it does. If you try to jam a radar, this missile will dete can detect that and fly towards the jammer. Now, jammer does this to a radar screen. Fun fact, there are five aircraft in this picture. What that jammer is doing is the equivalent of a flashbang for radar. It's shooting on all of those crazy waves you saw before, but this radar that wants to pick up its own reflection now sees a bunch more and says, oh shit, this guy's full of everything. Because jamming by definition releases a lot of signal, home on jam has a very, very easy time finding the target because home on jam doesn't actually use a radar to see. It's basically just a set of ears that hears, you know, a lot of noise is coming, all go towards the noise. You can argue that like a, like a flashbang would obviously blind people, but if a flashbang goes off at the end of a tunnel you're like a, you're like a thousand feet away from, you'll see the flash, but it won't blind you and you know where to go now. So, thank you very much. Whoopee, round of applause, yeah. round of applause for him. What if it's me?